it. Let's see what happens. So I was in London a few days ago and I saw something that I've never seen before. And I've been thinking about it ever since. It's kind of bothering me. Have you guys seen these new stores that Amazon is building? There's no cashiers, no checkout area, no cash registers. You just scan your Amazon app, walk in, take anything you want, walk out, and your Amazon account is automatically charged and a receipt is sent to you by email. I'm honestly not sure what to think about this. On the one hand, it is very convenient, even kind of cool. On the other hand, it feels like the next level of surveillance. It feels kind of scary to be normalizing this, and it is going to be normalized. This is the future of grocery shopping and probably all shopping, and I'll tell you why. Walmart, for example, says that they lose about $3 billion a year from theft, but it's basically impossible to steal from a store like this. You can go ahead and try, take anything you want, stick it in your pocket and walk out. You're still going to be charged. You can't even get into the store without scanning your app. They know who you are the moment you walk through the door and they have access to your credit card. This means that Amazon stores will automatically be more profitable and that will force all the other stores to either drop their prices to compete or adopt the same model. And I suspect they'll do the latter. So imagine that in the not too distant future, shopping as a whole is going to be basically automated surveillance interesting as well that the book of revelation says that there's going to be a time when you won't be able to buy or sell without a particular mark you can really see how something like that is possible now you can't just walk into a store like this and try to buy something with cash it's not even that they won't let you use cash you just can't it's impossible so again it's convenient but i think kind of scary what do you guys think uh, i think you're so i was on it all right, so first of all, <clears throat> the suggestion is that uh, it's there's coming a time when you won't be able to buy or sell without the microchip in your hand. Right, he didn't flat out say it, but that's that's what that's what they teach, right? Okay, so here's the problem with it and um, first of all let's identify this this is a futurist mindset all right you can even equate it to dispensationalism right where this idea well this isn't happening now it's going to happen in the future and the people apply this to many verses ignoring the reality of right now all right that's the problem I mean that's a big problem right? it's not a small thing it's a big thing if you're not able to recognize what's happening right now uh, that's a big problem you're gonna be deceived by it and think about what Jesus says uh, take heed that no man deceive you right I mean, when he's asked about the end times, the very first thing he says is, Take heed that no man deceive you. Alright, so I want to point out something here before we get into Revelation here. I also will choose their delusions. So this, this thing here of walking into Amazon and... Uh, having to have the mark of the beast otherwise you can't buy their products uh, that's delusional okay and so let's go into this so uh, you know you can go to the perhaps we can go to mark the mark of Cain what was the mark of Cain well I don't believe he had a mark at all a physical mark I think it was a spiritual mark on his head so let's go to the book of Revelation oops let's just go to Revelation 1 first of all because we gotta establish this I, I wanna come at you as though um, you're a new believer and you don't understand the book of Revelation so I wanna point out something very important that a lot of people miss and in particular those that lack faith completely miss it the revelation and this is the very first verse in the book of revelation the very first one 
the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto the servants. Are, are you paying attention? If you're not paying attention, you're going to miss it. To show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. All right, that means these things are going to happen, and then they're not. Then they're going to be over. All right, or they're going to come to pass. I mean, it means what it says. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. All right, now he's going to show John. And John is going to tell us what he was shown in these 22 chapters of Revelation. So it's important to understand that what we're being shown from John is by his angel, by uh, the angel of God, right? And these visions are spiritual. Make no mistake about it. Okay. That's very important. You have to understand these are spiritual visions being written down for us so that we might see. It's really important. If you don't understand that, forget about it. All right. So uh, we see here um, well, we got seven mentions of the mark of the beast. Is that right? Mark, 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 mark. And mark here. There's another way to do this. Better way to do this. Notice here there's eight verses. When we put in mark of the beast, there was seven. Put in just mark, there's eight. And there we go. There's number eight. And you know that's kind of interesting, isn't it? Let's see here. If we go here, you know, seven mentions, <clears throat> and uh, then uh, you just put in Mark, and then there's eight mentions. There's seven mentions of Mark Beast, eight mentions of Mark. All right, it's kind of interesting, but so uh, first of all, um, we're going to I guess we're going to work backwards, all right? So he causes all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a mark in the right hand or in their forehead. So in the right hand signifies signifies uh of the works and the forehead signifies oops signifies the thoughts very important all right so to show unto his servants the things which must shortly come to pass and he sent and signified it he sent and signified it. So also what we're seeing here with the mark is that in the right hand or in the forehead is uh, talking about the spiritual things that man does. Also he causes all. So there's a problem here when you are teaching that people that get the mark of the beast are all going to hell 
the idea is ludicrous so if you get a microchip in your hand you're going to hell well that's not what saves you and that's not what condemns you right so if you are viewing everything in the physical on it in an earthly level in the natural that's a logical conclusion for sure but we're talking about spiritual things and this is a spiritual book and it's giving us spiritual details and therefore the mark of the beast is a spiritual mark the mark in the right hand signifies the work and the mark in the forehead is signifying uh, thoughts or beliefs perhaps beliefs might be a better description nevertheless nobody is going to Amazon with a microchip in their forehead that's never gonna happen and so that's what but that's what the futurist viewpoint is they believe people are going to be getting microchips not just in the right hand that's that sounds great man oh I, I could see that <clears throat> yeah for sure but not in their foreheads nobody is getting microchipped in their foreheads that's ridiculous all right that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark in the name of the beast or the number of his name so now we see it's not just the mark in the forehand or or in the forehead or in the hand the right hand it's also the name of the beast or the number of his name so you can totally discount the idea of the microchip right and then also you can totally discount the idea of this being a physical thing it's a spiritual thing now I want you to understand that the mark of the beast and not but being able to buy or sell this is all in regards to the beast which is the fourth beast of Daniel which is the last beast until the end of the world all right, so now when we're talking about money, this is money that pertains to the fourth beast or the beast of Revelation. All right, so you've got everybody participating in this system. That's all it is. Right, everybody is part of this system the same monetary system all right I think it, it we've gradually grown into this system that people are not able to see it right it's like being dipped into boiling or into warm water and the heat gets turned up and it, the water starts to boil but it's so subtle, so gradual, you don't even notice it. Now, try to imagine, if you will, a time when there was not this one world monetary system where you didn't have coins, you didn't have uh, bank accounts, you didn't have, uh, you know, the exchange system if you will to where every man had his own worth and that he would buy and sell according to the goods that he had now compare that with what's going on in today's world it's night and day in today's world we're all connected to the same system that's a world system and that world system is the beast system and if you look at money and just um, 
like an overall view you see each nation has its own money but then connecting all the nations as this monetary or ex exchange equivalency system what have you and then at the very at the very top of the pyramid if you've heard the old phrase all roads lead to Rome at the very top of the pyramid is the Vatican now you could take a look at it at the dollar bill and you notice it's got Latin words on it it's got the pyramid on it and everything about it is telling you <laughs> that the Vatican is in charge of it all and this is not a matter of um, individual countries but we are in a world system or as George Bush would say a new world order that was a long time ago too All right, but that's it's been in play for a long time and the world order the old world order was still a one world system all right so the new world order is just an advancement of the world system all right so I mean that right there alone should cover it now the future the futurist will not only say this is going to happen in the future they will take many other verses well, I don't understand that, so that must be something that happens in the future. That sort of mentality is naive, naivety, right? It's ignorance. Now, what you want to do is take these scriptures and apply them to the world that we live in today. All right. Now, like in Revelation 20, verse 4, And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reign with Christ a thousand years. All right, so just so we're clear, this is happening right now okay it's not this I mean you hear so many people teaching Jesus is going to come and then he's gonna reign for a thousand years and then he's gonna stop reigning and somebody else is gonna take over apparently I don't know doesn't make any sense we are living and reigning with Christ right now if you do not live and reign with Christ right now how can you say that you are saved doesn't make any sense now, think about this. For the, during this thousand years, there are people worshiping the beast and receiving the mark in their foreheads for a thousand years. Now, if you are of the futurist viewpoint, saying, well, this is going to happen in the future, then you have to claim that Jesus is not coming for at least a thousand years a thousand plus years <clears throat> and that's well, that's a big mistake that's a big mistake because when Jesus comes it's going to be at a time that is unexpected it's unexpected so is there a is there a verse to support that unexpected unexpected oh, I gotta think about this a little bit I thought there was a verse let's wait go, let me go back there at an hour that no man knows so that's not I mean that's all 
All right, well, so anyways, the point I wanted to make is that when... Oh, no, I, I remember it now. Sorry about that. So when Jesus comes back... Um, it's gonna, it's going to be uh, completely unexpected, just like in the days of Noah, which is Noah. People were just eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, and then all of a sudden, bam! Oops. Where am I at here? Whoa, watch out. Alright, there it is. Right. And knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. So when this happens, it's going to be totally unexpected. So therefore, it's a big mistake to say, hey, this is not going to happen until the future. And what are you going to say when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven? Are you going to tell him, "No, you can't go. You can't come back yet. The mark of the beast is not here yet." All right. Or you know, there are going to be other people, or same people, saying, well, "You can't come back yet, Jesus. The Antichrist has not come back yet." You see what I'm saying? It's a big, big mistake. You're going to stand there and say, Hey, God, you can't come back yet. All right, that's a big mistake. You don't want to be in that position to say, No, Lord, it's too soon. Right? You, It's better for you, in my opinion, <laughs> to be able to identify the scriptures as it relates to the world that we live in today otherwise what's the point of the scripture why are we being shown all these things why are we being warned of all these things if it's not applicable for today if you can't apply it to what's going on today what's the point of the scripture and I strongly contend that the scripture is good very good and that we absolutely can apply them to what we see in the world today all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect thoroughly furnished unto all good works.